मरी अस्क्रैबी पारदर्शक पालन कोसम गिगे प्रयत्ना चस्ता वी वाटिंग टू एलिमेट करपन वी वाटिंग टू ब्रिंग अबउट ट्रांसफर्मेस इन द in this whole process by bring about by bringing about transparency into this whole system and in the di- and in this direction the government for the past one month has been moving in this direction in this process i require your full cooperation Wholehearted support. Prati collectoru, prati SP ne ka kunda, prati udyogi guda. Yeh vishemlo, everybody is very important. Otherwise, we will never achieve our goal. yesterday ninna ias ilgalam ias la meeting jarugutha unnapudu i probably spoke in detail giving a direction and in continuation to that second day's meeting that is ips addressing the all the ips officers i continue this meeting when we are sitting down here we always aspire we want to be number one on the obviously it's anybody's aspiration and police will know we want to be number one police department in this country any our police that is my police because i say my police because it's us together i own you and you own me this is our government it's an aspiration that we want to be number one we want to showcase to this world to this country that we are going we want to be number one and we are number one and but number one police ante emiti what is the definition of being number 1 what are the best practices best practice ante best practices ante emiti annadi meeku anta kuda telisi unte i just give you a small example here in america what is one of the developed most developed countries పోలీసులను ప్రజలే అనుకుంటారు ఈవెన్ పోలీస్ ఆర్ ఎలెక్టెడ్ బై పీపుల్ ఇన్ అమెరికా ఇన్ డెవలప్డ్ కంట్రీస్ నాట్ ఓన్లీ ఇన్ అమెరికా బట్ సో మెనీ అదర్ డెవలప్డ్ కంట్రీస్ పోలీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్సో ఎలెక్టెడ్ బై పీపుల్ డూ యూ నో వై ఐ థింక్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ కెన్ గెస్ వై బికాస్ ఇట్ మీన్స్ డెమోక్రసీ because it means that people who are elected to that places people who who go to that place should know the meaning of democracy should understand democracy the reason why people elect them is because they should have a human face otherwise they will be defeated if we do not have human faces human face if we do not sympathize with the needy then we lose the election that is the reason why elections in america take place even for positions such as police chiefs in a democracy it's very important that we respect democracy many a times we see this conflict coming up 
many a times we see this conflict where, wherein we say, why should we care for an MLA? Why should we care for an MP? Many a times we see this conflict, especially police department. But at the end of the day, we are all in this process of democracy. If we do not respect democracy, then democracy would fall. Whether we like it, whether we don't like it, two lakh people exercise their franchise to get these people elected. Two lakh people reimpose their faith in these people and voted for them. And if we do not respect them, usually it so happens in police department. That is the reason why I'm just bringing about this topic. The democracy just falls flat. It's so very important that we understand this, that we need to work together. We need to have an inclusive, cooperative strategy in place. I mean, I do not say support them in illegal activities. I do not say support them in looting. I do not say support them in corruption activities. No. Anything to do with corruption? No. Anything to do with illegal activities? No. Anything to do with looting? No. But the rest of the matters, all other matters, we need to work together. We need to take them into confidence. We need to put them as the face. See, no MLA wants a bad name. No MP wants a bad name. Nobody in public life wants to have a tag that he's bad. All what you need to do is just incorporate, involve him in the governance part so that you know they get a kick that they're also part of the process and you just convince them beforehand just sit down with them smile talk to them give them a cup of coffee smile talk to them and just convince them that you know idi cheste meek chadda peru ostundi idi cheste manchi peru ostundi chadda peru ostundi annadi why would they ask you to do all what needs to be done is you just need to smile, talk to them, give a cup of coffee and make them understand. That's it. As simple as that. If this happens, 50% of the problem is gone. If we don't do this, if we don't smile, if we don't lift their phones, then you have a problem. Just Keep this ego aside. All of them. It applies to both sections. To the politicians as well as to the officers. You know, we are together running this democracy for good governance. And it's very important that we sail together. So just you know, make a few changes in your approach. It makes things better. Having said this, about wanting to be number one polis, wanting to follow the best practices. Having said this, I would want to bring about uh, certain issues. Konevishyalo, out of my experience in, from the previous government, I would want to bring about a few issues. So when, we spoke, when we speak about good governance, when we speak about best practices, when we speak about wanting to be number one police. Gada Prabhu to experience lo koni jabtano. Yedechega, right in front of our eyes. Antenduku, I mean, in fact, you know where the chief minister's residence is, right beside. Right in front, 
right beside you see sand being looted you see proclaims working you see jcbs working you see hundreds of lorries going taking sand dispatching sand everybody knows it's illegal it's happening right in front it doesn't just stop with just cms residents and right beside the cms residents this activity is happening you see in west godavari an mro a lady mro was dragged out was caught by hair hit it all the newspapers because she was obstructing an mla from looting she was obstructing an mla who was involved in sand mafia is this best practice is this number one police it just doesn't stop with west godavari or this district here everywhere all over the state right in front of our eyes manakalla yedutne jcb sir working pokhlain sir working hundreds of lorries of sand is being looted yet we don't do anything we know it is illegal is this best practice manakalla yedutne ide jillalo just go to guntur you know it hit all the newspapers it went to the court illegal mining illegal mining rampant illegal mining right in front of our eyes right neighboring district guntur what did we do is this the best practice is this number one policing we need to ask ourselves right in front of our eyes mla is demanding money from theaters theater owners also guntur institutions are are forced to pay money clubs are run where gambling takes place mls are involved all this is happening in front of our eyes was happening in front of our eyes is this the best practice for governance good governance is this number one policy right in this capital city in the name of land pooling in the name of land pooling land even ivaru who were not wanting to part with their land it's their land we need to respect that but government wants it somebody is not wanting to part there's no humanity shown right in front of our eyes people who do not who people who did not want to cooperate they were harassed false cases booked so much so that 11 of them committed suicides just yesterday i think i saw it in the times of india newspaper headlines rti act 11 of them committed suicides people who were not wanting to give land for land pooling and six of them are dalits and them 
Is this good governance, best practices? Is this number one policing? Right here in Vijayawada city, women were harassed, given money at high interest rates and they were not able to pay and because they were not able to pay they were forced into sex racket they were videographed in the city call money sex racket scam what happened how many cases booked how many of them were arrested Big zero. Is this best practice? Is this good governance? Is this the number one policy? I ask you straight. Imalne Adutauna. So many of us are sitting here. IAS, yesterday I met, I was posing the same question to the IAS officers. Now I'm asking you. So many of us officers are sitting here. IAS, IPS, civil servants, government, secretaries, highest level bodies, ministers, including the chief minister himself. All of us are sitting here. Very well knowing that this building is illegal building. Very well knowing that this building where we sit in, where we're sitting in, has breached every violation. Letter written by the department quoting Irrigation department, the road on which we traveled, the bund, the bund level, the maximum flood level of the flood level is 22.6. The area where we are sitting is at 19.6 meters. River Conservation Act breached, Loka Ikta judgments breached. Green Tribunal judgments breached, master plan breached, building bylaws breached. In front of our eyes, Ikade Manakella Yadutane CM Gare. Illegal building law under. Pakane. No, sorry. Maji seeing her. Whatever it is, even if you see him, even if I do it, it's still wrong. Doesn't make a difference. We are in positions of authority. Does it justify? That because I am a CM, because you are an SP, because you are a collector, you can do it. We can't. How does it justify a CM staying in an illegal house, illegal property, illegal building loan taro? Pakne ikade. The government itself constructs an illegal building. And then what happened? Because CM himself is living in an illegal building. Because the government itself constructs an illegal building, what happens? You see this entire road. Everywhere you have illegal buildings coming up. Nobody to stop. Nobody to stop. Right in front of our eyes. See this entire road. What are we doing? Is this good governance?
best practices? I ask all of you to think. Alochin Jaman Adutana. When we are in power, when we are in position of strength, it comes with responsibility. We need to live by an example. We need to set certain standards in place. And when we drop, do we have any moral right or authority to even question anybody else? We need to ask ourselves this basic question. That is why I say to all of you sitting down here, I say, say no to corruption, say no to looting, say no to illegal activities. And to clean up the system, to bring about a change into the system, to set a standard in place. Yesterday I gave a call. I said I'm holding this meeting just to, show, just to showcase this. That this is not how one should be. This is not what we are. This is not good governance. Yesterday I said, let's start the demolition from here in this, from this building. Today I'm asking you the same thing. Starting tomorrow, this building will be the first building to be demolished. Because we want to send a signal. We want to send a message. Once we start here, this entire road will be cleansed. It just doesn't stop here. I want you to take up this exercise in the districts as well. Send a message to the collectors as well as to the SPs. I speak to both of you. Show them that, you know, we are different. Show them henceforth what has happened is happened. Henceforth, this government will bring about a change. We are not going to keep quiet if sand is outrightly looted. We are not going to keep quiet. Send a message. If illegal mining takes place, send a message. We are not going to keep quiet. If somebody forces people to give money, even if it means RMLS. It doesn't make any difference. Send a message, we are not going to keep quiet. Send a message against illegal activities. Anything to do with illegality, send a message. Anything to do with corruption, send a message. Anything to do with looting, send a message. Only then we bring about best practices. Only then we can talk about number one policy. Only then we can talk about good governance. It requires a strong will. And I'm saying you, and I'm saying to you, that I'm with you. I'm with you. Anything you do it in this purview, my blessings are totally with you. I'm totally in support of you. Bring about a change. Let the system change. When you talk about in the villages, ensure no bell shops. Bell shop itself is a criminal word. There's no word in the dictionary as a bell shop. 
But in my Padayatra, when I've noticed, I've seen not one in one, not one in a village, several. Clubs, gambling, And when I asked that I'm attending this meeting, I asked a few of your senior colleagues, whom I've known them well, as to what are the best practices? What should I tell the collectors? What should I tell the SPs who are coming to meet me on best practices? A few suggestions came to me. They gave me this book. And uh, I will not quote them all, but I just quote a few of them. What I think, when practiced, will give a good name to the SPs. Now, I strongly believe in one thing. We are here by the grace of God. And when we are here, you know, because by the grace of God and by the grace of the people that I am here. And through me, you are all SPs. When we send a message, we send a message together as one. When I say good governance, we are together as good governance. If I fail, you fail. If you fail, I fail. Tomorrow, if people are to vote for me back to power, it's only going to happen when all of us together deliver. If we don't deliver, if I don't deliver, you don't deliver, and people don't vote us out, when people vote us out, then it's failure on all, failure on all our part. I've not done my job well, you've not done your job well. And ultimately, the result is we've been voted out. So it's very important that we work together as one for good governance. It's work, but we work together as one to bring about this change. And when I was discussing about this change, a few suggestions, what people have suggested, what I thought I'd share with you now today. A couple of them I've already told you. Friendly and transparent policy and elaborating this friendly and transpar transparent policy, I gave you a little bit of briefing beforehand. I said, first thing is, whenever somebody comes to you, forget about MLA, even anybody else, First thing, smile. Show your teeth. Abhishek, I want your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to be, no, we can't just be firm. No, you need to relax a bit. You need to be friendly with the people who come to you. They should not get a feeling that, oh my God, why should I come here? This man doesn't even... He does man doesn't even care about me. No, that's not the way. The approach should be we are here as we are, we are here as their friends. The approach should be very friendly. The approach should be very transparent. We would have to give them the confidence because you know we are working them. We are working for them. So let's keep let's get one thing in on our mind straight. We are not different. We are public servants. We are not public rulers. We are public servants. That includes me, the biggest public servant. And it includes all of you here also, the same. So let's always keep that in mind. Once we get this into our head, then we'll open up a bit, we'll relax a bit, you know, we'll smile, receive them properly. That's very important. I think, you know, 50% of the problem is addressed when we receive people properly. 
I think, you know, that's one thing that will go a long way for, for the best practice. Humility is a virtue. Uh, something what I need to, what I always learn from my father. Yedige koddi vadagali. As we keep growing, we've got to humble ourselves more and more. I think uh, my father taught me well. I think being in the position that I am in today gives me a little bit of that room to advise you on that. Then you have another area, what I just spoke about, dealing with the MLAs. I think uh, I've made myself quite clear that, you know, we just against say no to corruption, say no to looting, say no to illegal activities. The rest of the areas, let's take them together. Let's work together. Let's have an inclusive governance. The rest of the areas. That's explicitly explained. I think uh, you'll do well with it. To bring about, as I said, you know, the people, sh people should not should sit tight. To bring about that, we've gone ahead and given weekly off. I think weekly off for police, I don't think it's anywhere in this country. Probably Bihar tried it for a while and uh, somehow, I don't think it actually went that far. But first time, weekly off for police, this is something what's coming from our governments. That is our meaning, all of us together. And we are committed to it. You know, this weekly off would entitle the situation where we would have to be recruiting probably 20%, 25% more, more police into the force. We will do it. You know, it gives emotional wellness. When somebody takes a day, day off, spends that time with the family, it helps. It rejuvenates the person. Because I strongly believe that it should be done. And then, God's grace, today we're implementing that. Please ensure that it is scrupulously followed. Pass a message to the lowest level of your department. Give them a break. Show, show, I mean, get in systems in place that it's scrupulously followed. The perception that police are biased perception that police are biased, especially this perception, especially if it, if it is there in vulnerable sections, then I think we're doing a bad job. Especially these Dalits, these weaker sections, if these people develop this kind of a perception on police, then I think we utterly fail in our duty. Because you know, these people have no voice. They're the poorest of the lot. These people have no voice. And if these people, if they feel that police are biased, and that is something that we need to seriously ponder. You know, that is one thing what I ask you to just give it a little bit of thought. There in those sections, perception should change. In the police department also, have a reception, reception area. 
let's engage even if it's going to mean recruiting people we will recruit people have somebody in the front section the moment somebody comes into the police department let it be a reception area with a wonderful smile receiving the complainant it should be done when somebody comes for to launch to lodge a complaint you know it's out of distress that they're coming and it's not that you know we are doing them a favor by taking the complaint we are rendering our service so it's very important that you know you receive them well with a smile the receptionist receives them have them seated then a police comes you no know, how do you do how do you see in the western world a police comes talks to them understands them then files the case you know, these kind of mechanisms should have to come in place i think all of you are youngsters you know i think you can bring about this change this transformation what was never there before and i think gautam anna also is uh, wanting to bring about a uh, change so i think they should be attempted friendly police it's very important and yesterday in uh, while i was conversing with uh, the collectors i was mentioning about district port portals the district district portals should document copies of fir's licenses permissions given all of these also should be made available in the district portals the dpos the sdpos circle officers shos should all be linked to this district portal e government system to ensure speed and transparency you now when we have two things will happen by showing this kind of uh, uh transparency one it will mount pressure on us to expedite the disposal of these cases that's good two it will showcase transparency now both these things are very important another important thing what i advise the sps to do is have a gauge of citizen satisfaction you no know, every police department whichever areas they are whichever jurisdictions they come under you know just gauge how the sis are performing how cis are performing how dsps are performing how asps are performing in that area just conduct a third party citizen gauge third party enquiries so that you get you get feedback whether that ci is corrupt whether that si is corrupt whether the dsp is corrupt see we at the top level decide to be non corrupt 50% of corruption is gone then the other 50% is how do we curtail corruption at that stage that's the 50% that's that's the steps what we need to take so have a gauge take periodical enquiries why do we believe why do we just you know uh, believe somebody who says i'm not corrupt you don't know how the si is performing or the ci is performing or the dsp is performing we just hear news and then we take decisions because that guy is sweet to us because that guy speaks to us well we presume that this guy is good we don't know conduct a third party enquiry gauge 
the perception from the people. How is this CI? How is this SI? You know for yourself, then you can take a call. Shift him out, not to shift him out. Ask for somebody to be shifted out, not ask for somebody to be shifted out. These are the options, choices, what you would have with more scientific, on scientific basis. Not out of whims and fancies, but more on scientific grounds. Take feedback from the victims, take feedback from the citizens on behavior of the officer, speedy disposal of cases by the officer, fairness of the officer, in all such parameters, what would actually improve then the response time. Now, I was just telling yesterday, every level, mandal level to district collector level, in their respective offices, conduct a grievance cell is what I was telling them. Where in that grievance cell conducted on Monday, we named it as Pandana. We asked the officers not only to conduct the grievance cells, but also take their telephone numbers and give them a receipt as to when we would be clearing their plea. That helps. And that receipt, I asked the, the collectors to randomly check if that receipt is being honored or not. Collectors also would be doing that giving a receipt on speedy disposal, saying that I would dispose in 15 days' time. I would dispose this case in one week's time. I would dispose this case in three days' time. Whatever time you think is right, mention it in the receipt, on the receipt. Then, it is your duty to ensure that it happens from the collector to the, rock, to the bottommost level. Then the collectors, when they go for inspection, surprise checks, meet the villagers. They can ask for the receipts. They say, has it been done or not? Has the timelines been met or not? It speaks something about the officer that you're dealing with. It speaks something about the credibility that is attached to this disposal mechanism. All that will happen if we can also bring about the same systems in place. No, it's something different. But when tried, it could send a strong message of credibility, of transparency, of speedy disposal. All three in place. I have asked the collectors to practice this. I would also request the SPs to bring it in place. It helps. Let there be, you know, somebody goes to file a complaint there is someone who receives them with a, smile on, with a smile on their face. Somebody attends to them, takes their complaint, gives them a receipt, says that so-and-so matter would be disposed in so many days. You know, there is a sense of confidence that, okay, I am well received, somebody is attending my job. It sends a strong signal. I think it will send a strong transformation signal. And also, SPs also, if they can shun pre-guided tours and conduct surprise checks, make night halls in the villages, even that would help. Direct interaction with the villages, pay special focus in visiting the localities inhabited by the weaker sections. No SP going to a weaker section, weaker section colony. SPs themselves asking, how is my CI doing? How is my SI doing? Are they doing good? Are you happy with them? It sends a, such a strong message. SP is doing. And it's not a pre-guided tour. Suddenly it's, a, out, suddenly it's a surprise. Nobody knows where, where you're going. Suddenly you just get down. 
go to a weaker section, ask them, how is my CA doing? How is my SI doing? Are they doing good? Are you happy with them? And now it sends a strong message. It helps change the system. But please make sure that you smile when you go there. That helps. Then uh, some of the guidance has come from cyber crimes. Police officials are not fully equipped to deal with these cases. But this is something what is becoming reality these days. Cyber stalking and harassment on social media against women should be given topmost priority. You know, women are something if we cannot protect, then I think we're failing in our duty. Stalking, cyber stalking, cyber harassment, especially, you know, with cell phones coming, at the numbers at which they're coming, all these things have become byproducts. Social imbalance, cyber harassment, we do not have sufficient training at the bottom level. Probably, you know, organize, na Gautam, organize for, you know, training for us at even at the topmost level, so that this training could be taken up to the bottommost level. Cyber crime is something what, you know, this is going to be future. We need to gear up, check out how other states are doing check out what, how the Western world is doing, how the developed countries are doing, how they're doing and how, do they, how are they dealing with it and how do we deal with it. And then proper imp, uh, training at the bottom most, to the bottom most level is very important. Eve T saying, I don't have to mention, Eve T saying, Yeah, I guess by and large, I don't think I should go anything beyond this. I think all of you are quite capable. But I just thought, you no, know, these are the best practices. When we say good government, good governance, best practices, good policing, number one policing. You no, know, I think. These are the areas what should be touched. And uh, I have absolute confidence and faith in you. In fact, if you remember right, uh, before even uh, my cabinet was sworn in, I finished recruitment of SPs. I finished recruitment of collectors. Before even my cabinet was sworn in. And you know how I did it? I just took three parameters, honesty, efficiency, and not leaning towards TDP. Of course, I had to do that. Otherwise, you know, the system would get further polluted. Meaning balance, neutral. That means YCP is not in power, that means somebody would be leaning towards YCP, obviously. It's only going to be the ruling party that people would be leaning towards at best. The, worst, the reason why I did what I did was, last five years the system collapsed. The SPs and the collectors were made to, were made party to it. In a way, they were just asked to see rather than to do anything. That's what I just spoke about, sand mafia, the illegal illegalities, what I just gave you examples, and they were just made party to it. Illegalities, what should not be tolerated, were tolerated. Looting, what was not supposed to have been tolerated, was tolerated. 
corruption, what was not supposed to have been tolerated, was tolerated. And all of it happened in front of our eyes. So obviously I had to see for people who were not leaning towards GDP. So that, you know, a neutral atmosphere could come out. So I looked at honesty, I looked at efficiency. And then I figured out these people were the best for the jobs. And with utmost respect to you, I urge you to deliver good governance. I am not going to interfere, especially when it comes to corruption, especially when it comes to illegal activities, especially when it comes to looting. You have my word for it. And I am telling you from this stage, anybody who gives you instructions to do that, ignore them. Ignore them. But rest of the areas, take people into confidence. Take the MLAs into confidence. Take the ministers into confidence. Because we are together as one. Governance means all of us together. So take everybody together. You know, bring in a governance what is inclusive governance. With inclusive governance, a lot of problems could be addressed. In a better way, in a speedier manner, in an efficient manner. So keep that in mind. I don't think I should uh, say anything beyond this. And I wish you all the best. And you have my faith and my confidence. And please make me proud. Thank you. Sir, as you desired, sir, uh, the packed lunch is in front of all the officers. Uh, there is also agenda before the officers. So officers who have to present the agenda will keep their packed lunch aside <laughs> and start the agenda. And then we go on. Collectors can have their packed lunch and bid us goodbye.